Hi everyone, it's Olivia from Girly Bunches and in this week's video I'm going to be starting off, um, I suppose, uh, a series videos, um, and I'm going to be talking about Tunisian crochet and I'm showing you the hook because that's probably going to give away the most obvious difference between Tunisian crochet and normal crochet. So normal crochet, we've just got this um, normally a short crochet hook with a, a thumb place, um, the hook and the throat, which is normal for the uh, Tunisian crochet hook as well but there's no thumb pa uh, place and it is much longer and it's we're talking about the sort of length of a knitting needle which we'd sort of associate that with. So if you wanted to have a go at Tunisian crochet and I'll put off by the thought of having to go and buy new hooks um, not that you know normally that stops us if we like crochet you know any excuse to buy a new hook isn't it but if you just wanted to give it a go then you there is nothing to stop you from just using your normal crochet hook and just giving it a practice so um if i just start getting into it and showing you let me just actually show you um the result i've got some already hooked up here i'll take this off and one thing you'll notice is that it curls up and it loves to curl up <laughs> and that's what it really loves to do and this is the um, Tunisia, Tunisian simple stitch so that's kind of if you imagine it as being the double crochet or you, if you're American you might know that as the single crochet remember I'm British um, as far as I'm aware and do correct me if I'm wrong, I don't believe there's actually a difference in the names like like there is with um, British terminology and um, American terminology with crochet stitches. I believe that these are all the same, which is a bonus. So hopefully that is the case. What, um, from what I've seen in books and read online, there doesn't seem to be any difference. So um, if you do know that there is a difference and I'm talking nonsense, please do let me know. But as far as I'm concerned, that this is called a Tunisian simple stitch and it is the same wherever you are. If I just turn it over to look at the back, you can see that basically all the knots, <clears throat> excuse me, that you would work, um, whether you are knitting or, in, or doing crochet, are put to the back with this stitch. But um, yeah, you do get this sort of different look. I like it. It's really thick. It gives a nice, thick, firm feeling yeah, to it. So, so let me get into showing you how I did this. There we go. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a slip knot because we're going to do a chain, just like we would do with a normal crochet, you know, starting off with normal crochet. And if I'm talking to someone who's never done crochet before either, then um, I'll put some links in uh, the description box down below of getting started with crochet. So if you've never crocheted before, then check those videos out. But just to, for people who may not have crocheted before, to do a chain, what you do is you put your slip knot on the hook and you just put the yarn over the hook. So you have your knot and then a loop and you pull that loop through that first loop that you had on the hook. I'll just do that again. You put the yarn over and you pull it through the loop and that's a chain. And if you've never crocheted before, I suggest you just keep doing that over and over and over and over and over again. Just keep doing it until you're absolutely sick of doing it and then keep doing it. You know, or sit and do it until you get nice even spaced loops like that because um, they're your chains back to um, getting started so what you want to do is you want to do your normal chains and each row is that's made consists of two passes which it's called so you want to do a pass forward and then you do a pass back and that constructs your first row so each row is made of two passes so once you've got your your uh, chain made of however many stitches you want to uh, have just to get going you want to keep that loop on there and if it's easier just put your finger on it so what we're going to do is we're going to work in to our chains like we would normally do but we're just going to pick up one loop and we might call that a back loop if we were working 
um, normal crochet but we're not working normal crochet and with crochet we would only keep one stitch going at a time so we would gradually work our way across which we're going to do but with Tunisian crochet you keep your loops on the hook so you're going to pull the yarn through and you're going to keep that on the hook I do that again you put your hook through the next loop or your next chain pull the yarn through and you're going to keep that that loop on there and you're going to do that all the way to the end this row obviously is the most fiddliest <laughs> and you just keep going until you get to the end and I've just got one more to go there pulling that loop through and there we go there's our first pass forward so what that's so what you should look like is you've got a row of knitting that's what it should look like looks like we're about to do some knitting which of course we're not we're doing some Tunisian crochet but that's what it looks like so that's why you need the length of the needle so that you can get your stitches all on okay so now what we're going to do is we're going to do a return at the beginning of every return so we're concentrating on this stitch now you want to put the yarn over pull it through and now for the rest of the row we will work two stitches together so we're going to put the yarn over and we're going to pull through that first one and the second one we're going to pull the yarn put the yarn over we're going to pull it through the first one and the second one put the yarn over and put it through the first loop and the second loop and you're going to do that all the way back to the end and you've got two loops left the yarn over put it through now you've just got one just like we had when we first started doing our pass forward so now if we just look at our stitches now we've got these bars that come down as you can see there and they are the stitches that we're going to work into to do our next pass forward so you take the hook you put it through the loop or that bar that's on the front yarn over and pull it up through it goes down through the front yarn over and pull the yarn up so we're now recreating our stitches back onto our, our needle and we're going to do that all the way to the end so we've got got to the end and then we just need to put that through that last loop there and that's why we did that that first stitch without going we're just going through one loop so it gives us that bar there to work our stitch into the end. If we hadn't have done that we would have ended up here which meant our work would have been going that way, getting narrower. Okay so I'm going to do that, do that return one more time so we're going to put the yarn over, pull the hook through just one loop so that gives us our bar to work through when we get back to the end and the rest of the stitches we're going to do a yarn over and pull the hook through the, two, the first and the second loop. without splitting the yarn, brilliant. <laughs> Again, yarn over, first and second loop, and just keep going all the way back to the end. There we go, two more loops left, and I'm just gonna do yarn over, and there we go. And that's two passes of forward return, forward return. And as you can see, we've got a row that's completed and a row that doesn't look complete but to continue you would just then again put your hook through that front bar yarn over and pull it through 
So I'm going to do that a few more times. I'm going to come back when I've got a bit more fabric to show you. Okay, so there we go. I've done a few rows there. And as you can see, it makes such a lovely texture. It's just, I love it. And as you can see, it wants to curl. Like I explained, all the knots are on the back. So that's why it wants to curl that way. So it's just a trait. It's what happens with Tunisian crochet. You're not doing anything wrong if that's what happens. So I thought I would just show you quickly how to cast off um, or finishing off. Um, I say cast off because it feels like knitting and casting off so you know that's why I've called it cast off. Okay so what we're going to do is we're going to put our hook through and pull up. Instead of pulling it through just this part here we're also going to pull it up through that other stitch. So we're going up through the two stitches. And then again, we're going to put that through the next loop and pull that up through that and the loop we already have on. And it, if you've knitted and casted off before, you'll see that it is very, very similar. And you just make your way across to the other side as you go, pulling through both loops to give that finished edge which looks remarkably like a um, top of crochet as normal and also um, when you cast off on knitting. So very simple, put the hook through both loops with the yarn over. So through the loop, yarn over and pull it through both that you have on the hook. Just get to the end there. Nice and simple, nice and steady. And there we go. So just go to cut our end there, like we do with crochet and knitting, and just pull it nice and tight, and then we're done. And as you can see, it gives us such a nice fabric. But yeah. Um, this is my little introduction into Tunisian crochet. I'd love a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, then uh, hit the subscribe button wherever it is. I would love you to do that. I've got lots of crochet videos you can watch if uh, this is the first time you're watching one of my videos. And um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this little series. Thanks for watching. Take care. Bye. Bye.